When a meteorite wiped out all the dinosaurs, the planet was left without fearsome predators. It wasn't until 20 million years later that they appeared. Animals that had no rivals. They became the apex predators of their time. But what happened then? These days, these animals are known by other names. The weasel, the otter, and of course, the wolverine. They attack bears, kill crocodiles, and their family is the largest and most dangerous in the world. Meet the Mustelids. If you've ever seen a weasel, you know that this animal looks cute, small, fluffy, with beady eyes. It's simply adorable. But trust me, you don't want to get too close to these little animals because weasels aren't just cute. They're truly bloodthirsty. It's just who they are. Weasels have an ultra-fast metabolism and need to kill and eat about half their body weight every day. As a result, they've also become formidable hunters, and their killing methods are also scary. The weasel corners its prey, wraps its muscular body around the animal to immobilize it, and then delivers one killing bite to the back of the head, penetrating the skull or spinal cord. You know what other predator kills like that? The jaguar. But it's hard to compare the jaguar with the cute little weasel. This is what a death grip looks like. The unfortunate prey doesn't stand a chance. The weasel's bloodlust is innate and triggered by movement. You know, much like how a motion sensor that activates a light. However, in this case, instead of illuminating the room, it leads to an immediate attack. Even when it's not hungry, the weasel will attack anything that moves and looks like prey, which could mean virtually everything. There have been times when tiny weasels have been observed killing and carrying off prey that's twice, four times, or even ten times their own size. It had seemed that this hair is much larger than the weasel. Does that bother the weasel? Nope. And if there's a lot of prey around, the weasel will kill a lot more than it can actually eat. But that's not a problem because the leftover food can be put aside for later. Yes, weasels know how to preserve food. Weasels have evolved in cold climates and have learned to use that to their advantage. They dig small underground caches near the entrance to the burrow and store leftover food in them. Over time, the supply increases. When it's too cold outside to hunt, a weasel might just walk over to the caches and pull out a mouse it's saved up. But caches can sometimes get out of hand. For example, scientists found a weasel's cache in Greenland filled with the carcasses of nearly 150 lemmings. Since weasels are so voracious and always hungry, people even tend to think that the little predators kill just for fun. And this point of view is understandable. How else can you explain the behavior of the weasel, which kills absolutely all the birds in the hen house, although it can't possibly eat all of them, and it doesn't even carry the prey away with it? Moreover, it's believed that a weasel could even defeat a basilisk. Well, let's just ignore the fact that the basilisk is a fictional creature, because that's not the point here. Few creatures have struck more fear in the hearts than the basilisk, a monster feared across Europe and North Africa for centuries. Like many ancient creatures created by human imagination, it was a bizarre hybrid. A crested snake hatched from an egg laid by a rooster and incubated by a toad. Yeah, it sounds like complete nonsense, but there's no place for common sense when it comes to mythical animals. Forget the giant snake from the Harry Potter universe, that's what people thought the basilisk looked like. That's how it's depicted in the medieval bestiary. But check out the weasel gnawing on its breast. Only these animals were invulnerable to the monster's venom. The Roman poet Lucan even claimed the basilisk was so venomous that any birds flying over it would drop dead from the sky. And if a man on horseback stabbed a basilisk with a spear, the venom would flow up through the weapon and kill not only the rider, but also the horse. Yeah, back in that time, people had no grasp on the laws of physics. The only creature that, according to legend, the basilisk feared was the weasel, which ate a shrub called rue. Rue gave the weasel plus 100 to resistance to basilisk venom, so the weasel chased and killed the monster right in its lair. Some researchers speculated that accounts and descriptions of cobras may have given rise to the legend of the basilisk. Well, the idea of a weasel as the only enemy of the basilisk came about because people probably didn't know who mongooses were. After all, who could handle cobras better than these creatures? However, weasels are not the only members of the Mustelids family that are ruthless. 
Mustelids include various carnivorous mammals, including minks, badgers, polecats, otters, martens, wolverines. It's the largest family in the Caniformia suborder, so we'll definitely have a lot to talk about today. This swan was found covered in blood after an alleged attack in Derbyshire. The animal, with multiple bites and lacerations to its head, is believed to have been the victim of a mink attack. Luckily for the swan, it was immediately taken to the vet, because otherwise, well, minks know exactly what they're doing. Look, it's the same bite on the head again. And minks are really good at it, not just when it comes to swans. Though they give swans a really hard time, and that's assuming that they're known for their vicious temper and aggression. Alas, now the formidable swans in the UK may be threatened by an overseas invader with even more violent temperament. In 2016, a number of mute swans in the Thames declined as researchers suspected that minks had opened up a hunt for young birds. Mink attacks can result in significant injuries, particularly for adults, not to mention the vulnerability of younger individuals. In Scotland, at some point, minks went from being an annoying nuisance to a real issue. In 2011, there were persistent reports of these small predators attacking pets, killing baby swans, and even taking over floating homes. See. The mink is peeking out where it shouldn't be in the first place, and it seems to be quite aware of it. In one case, a woman discovered that her boat on a canal had turned into a mink's meat harvesting shop. Pest control specialists found about 80 duck carcasses inside, and it all started when the woman suddenly noticed that the ducks that used to nest around her house had disappeared. Well, at least she figured out what happened to them. This photo was also taken in Scotland, too close to people. They can be a real issue because they kill for the sake of food and fun, the expert said. The incident on the boat showed just how violent minks are. But what about more serious prey? This is the python that swallowed the porcupine and didn't survive this meal. Next up is the lion who had an unfortunate encounter with a porcupine during a hunt. It'll probably die soon from infections in its wounds. Now look at the animal that regularly eats porcupines and isn't bothered by that in the slightest. Yes, that's another member of the mustelids family, the fisher cat. They don't care that the porcupine has 30,000 quills that look like tiny harpoons. They look like something you try to avoid, and you certainly wouldn't want such a quill sticking to your skin. But the fisher cat's one of the few animals that regularly attack and eat porcupines. To do this, these predators run around porcupines trying to wear them down. Here it is, waiting for the right moment. To avoid the most dangerous parts of a porcupine's body, the neck, back, and tail, the fisher cat literally dances around its prey. Each time the animal sees the porcupine's face in the right position, it lunges forward and strikes. Repeated bites to the face disorient the prey, cause bleeding, and eventually send it into shock. Enough bites to the face and the porcupine will eventually bleed to death. Of course, this process is not quick. The expert says that the lethal dance alone takes from 30 minutes to an hour. Often in the process, the fisher cat would scalp the porcupine. Sometimes the porcupine gets beheaded, and there's an explanation for that as well. After the prey dies, the fisher cat grasps the porcupine's face with its jaws and turns the prickly animal over to expose its belly. That's the way to eat safely without risking getting quilled. True, fisher cats are sloppy, so they do get injured, but it doesn't seem to bother them. This one has three quills sticking out of its face, and that's just on one side. Yes, fisher cats don't worry when quills get in their faces. While they don't have superpowers that make them invulnerable to quills, they do seem to be able to resist infections that would kill other animals. An unpublished study examined 100 fisher cat skulls collected by hunters. The experts found that about 1 in 10 of the skulls had quills embedded in them, meaning that these tough little creatures had survived at least one quilling. The Canada lynx, a formidable hunter, roams freely in vast snowy landscapes with no one to challenge it, no one except for the fisher cat. In addition to fearlessly hunting porcupines, fisher cats can also target lynxes, predatory cats that are about twice the size of the average fisher cat. National Geographic reports that researchers tracking lynxes with radio collars have sometimes found their subjects dead with small bite marks on their necks and heads. These are the kind of bites commonly inflicted by fisher cats. Fisher cats, like their relatives I've already mentioned, really have no limit on the size of the animal they're willing to attack. Judging by the tracks, fisher cats often attack lynxes in the midst of a quick snowstorm, which probably works to the advantage of these vicious little predators. Fisher cats attack when lynxes are lying in their den to wait out the bad weather, 
going right for their necks. They just buckle on. They have a pretty powerful grip and they know where to attack, says the expert, adding that the Fisher cats finish lynxes off pretty quickly. Just a reminder, we're not talking about small domestic cats, we're talking about lynxes. Sure, the lynx doesn't give up without a fight, but it doesn't seem to last long. After the lynx dies, the fun just begins for the Fisher cats. They pull the lynx carcass apart and hide the pieces in different places, probably because they just can't eat that much meat at once. And by hiding in different places, I mean that a fisher cat might as well take a lynx's paw and drag it up a tree somewhere. You think this bear's climbing a tree for no reason? Nope, he's not even trying to reach a lynx's paw. He's trying to stay safe from a wolverine. Wolverines are really scary. Normally this animal can weigh 33 pounds. Yes, wolverines are the size of an average dog. Although wolverines are small in size, their inherent rage compensates for it. That's why when one of the wolverines ended up near Yellowknife Middle School, they put it on a lockdown. That's the right decision to make. Actually, we're all pretty lucky because wolverines rarely attack people, but it's not because they're afraid of us. More likely, they just don't want to waste their time on us because wolverines have better things to do, like biting a bear in its face or chasing it into a tree. It's no coincidence that in Latin, the wolverine is called gulo gulo, which can be translated as glutton glutton. These animals will eat anything. They've reportedly killed moose and devoured porcupines whole, along with the quills. You get it, right? Whereas fisher cats have simply learned to avoid quills and tolerate injuries, wolverines simply devour those quills. And no, they really aren't afraid of bears. I wouldn't be surprised if wolverines ate bears for breakfast. But we couldn't find any information on that. Though we do know that a wolverine once killed a polar bear in a zoo by latching at its throat and holding on until its foe died. I'll repeat that, and you just let that sink in. An animal the size of a dog killed the largest land predator, and it seems to have done so out of pure spite. Last year, rangers in a U.S. national park saw an amazing scene. Thirteen wolverines ran across a snowy field in pursuit of a mother grizzly bear and her three cubs. Keep in mind that a grizzly bear, especially with cubs, is one of the most dangerous creatures in the world. But apparently, even this predator is afraid of a pack of wolverines. But wolverines are not afraid of grizzly bears. And not only grizzlies. Here, a wolverine is fending off wolves, protecting itself and its cub. Wolverines are also willing to fight to the death. These are not the kind of creatures who will back down. We've blurred the details, but instead of the expected black fur, the area where the back of the wolverine's head should be reveals a pale gray flesh. Better not imagine that. This wolverine clearly survived a brutal fight and is now eating its prey like nothing happened, not bothered by losing its scalp. Moreover, the wound looks dark. That is, it may not be fresh and perhaps it's already healing. That's just how tough these animals are. Death by infection? Ha! Not when it comes to wolverines. Wolverines also have claws that can gut, well, pretty much anything in their way. They're thought to be semi-retractable, but they're actually fixed. Even that feature of the wolverine is unique among other creatures. However, the biomechanics of the toe allows the animal to perform all necessary actions and still keep its claws sharp. In addition, their claws are also curved and therefore ideal for hooking and shredding. Shredding what, you might wonder? everything that moves. Wolverines also live in some of the most inhospitable places on the planet. Wolverines have paws that are perfectly adapted for maneuvering through snowy terrain, making it highly unlikely for you to outrun them. Escaping from them would be equally challenging. Look, these footprints in the snow are not deep at all. Wolverines can be found in the taiga and tundra of North America, Europe, and Asia, where it can be chilly even in the summer. So no wonder that these animals have evolved specifically to handle the cold weather. They have large paws that spread when they hit the ground, doubling their contact area and distributing their weight. This helps wolverines move through the snow at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. Oh, and don't forget the thick, greasy fur which resists frost. Wolverines' teeth are also designed by nature specifically to tear and gnaw even when dealing with the frozen carcass. These teeth are unique in their own way. For example, wolverines have a special molar that sits sideways at 90 degrees, which is used to break bone. And it's also very handy for tearing frozen meat. 
In addition, wolverines have powerful jaws, and the combination of strong jaw muscles and special molars allows them to eat all parts of the animal, including hooves, bones, and teeth. Now check out this story. Last year, a biker was riding through an area in Idaho where wolverines live, and suddenly the wild animal decided to move towards her. On the one hand, if I were the biker, I'd get somewhere far away and as fast as possible. On the other hand, she filmed a unique video because the wolverine was carrying something. At first, we thought it was a skunk or a possum or something. Nope. Take a closer look. It's a goat head. I have so many questions. How did Wolverine get a goat head? Did it kill a goat, chew on it for days, and decide to take the head with it for dessert? Or was the head all the Wolverine got and someone else ate the rest of the goat? So, uh, Steve, is there anyone we haven't mentioned yet? Oh, that's right, ferrets. The endangered black-footed ferret is going extinct because of the plague. The disease, as is usually the case, is transmitted by fleas from rats that arrived in California in the 1800s. Both ferrets and prairie dogs, the ferret's main prey, are susceptible to the plague. If prairie dogs become extinct, it'll pose a significant threat to the survival of black-footed ferrets, as well as several other animals like eagles, owls, and coyotes who depend on prairie dogs as a primary food. This begs the question, how would one protect them all? For example, you could spread the vaccine over a huge area, not by hand, but with a glorified gumball machine. This device could be mounted on a drone, which would use GPS to drop the vaccine every 29 feet. We couldn't find a picture of this thing, but we imagine it looks like this. The drone will also be able to shoot left and right, meaning it'll drop three vaccine doses at the same time. A human can only cover 0.008 square miles per hour, but a drone can cover more than 0.3 square miles. Well, the projectiles are ordinary M&Ms covered in peanut butter. Prairie dogs find these candies tasty and eat them with pleasure, so it was decided to coat them with a vaccine and then to scatter them around. Who would refuse such a treat? Here they are, looking like typical candy. And then apparently the vaccinated prairie dog gets eaten by a ferret and everyone's happy. Well, except for the prairie dog, it's probably not thrilled about that. And this is an alligator. We all know what alligators look like. It's a deadly predator, just the look of one which can scare anyone. And this is a river otter, a small mammal that, yes, it's holding an alligator by its neck. These photos were taken in Florida and the otter ended up tearing the young alligator apart. In fact, otters are voracious predators, close to the top of the food chain in most places they live. So wherever they cross paths with alligators and caimans, they quite often act this way. This cornered caiman knows it's got problems. It's truly a remarkable feat. I mean, this isn't a small alligator. It's likely about three or four years old with onlookers estimating its length to be about five feet. It takes a courageous creature to confront such a formidable alligator. By the way, why did the otter bite its head? Apparently, this is a learned behavior. The otter has already tried attacking smaller gators and got bit several times before it realized which side of the alligator is less dangerous. This otter, one knows all too well, that it's best to approach an alligator from behind. Also, crocodiles and alligators swing their heads from side to side when they fight. In order to stay safe from the reptile strike, the otter needs to be completely out of its reach. The best course of action is to clamp onto the alligator's neck with its teeth while holding onto its back. Alligator skin is incredibly tough, making it difficult to bite through. The armor on its back is specifically designed to withstand the bites of other alligators. On the other hand, otters possess greater endurance. In contrast, alligators have enough energy only for short bursts of aggression. Therefore, the best strategy is to wear your opponent down, which actually takes only a few minutes. Pretty soon, the alligator will get tired, its muscles will fill with lactic acid and stop functioning. At that point, it's almost like it's intoxicated, and the otter can then get it up on the shore. Eventually, it's the lactic acid that'll cause the gator to die, not the bites. It would take a long time to kill a reptile this way. A group of otters can swiftly overpower a caiman measuring about 5 feet in length, making quick work of their prey within just 45 minutes. They consume the entire reptile, including its skull and bones. Otters consume every part of their prey, including the spine, leaving nothing untouched. Does it mean that otters eat their prey while it's still alive? Yes, 
As soon as the otter gets to shore, it immediately starts tearing off pieces of the alligator's skin. The otter has teeth sharp enough to get to the guts and meat. Many of the pieces end up scattered around. Some experts draw comparisons between otters and lions, noting that lions are also sloppy eaters. Actually, otters eat anything they can catch and take down. Here, for example, an otter calmly bites into a sharp-toothed piranha. All in all, these are smart, quick, and strong predators. They eat a lot of amphibians and fish, but they also prey on large beavers, raccoons, turtles, snakes, and small alligators. Of course, alligators can also eat otters, so here the fastest one wins. But there are actually more formidable otters, giant otters. Their footprints are often bigger than a human hand. These animals reach six feet in length and weigh 70 pounds. After the jaguar, the giant otter is the largest and most formidable predator in South America. But unlike the jaguar and all other otters, this species lives and hunts in packs of up to nine individuals. And that's a giant advantage, as giant as the otter itself. A biologist once observed a family of otters hunting an anaconda. The predators bit and held the snake in several places at once, and then began to thrash the anaconda against the trunk of a tree. Afterwards, the otters had a sort of tug-of-war game. Anyway, the anaconda didn't have any chance to live through this. Actually, giant otters may not be the most courageous otters out there. Imagine the shock of the people who spotted a sea otter off the coast of California eating a shark. Or rather, trying to eat it. Of course, it was a small horn shark, but still. Even the expert who was asked to comment on what happened admitted that this is the first recorded case of such a hunt. I mean, there are reports about sea otters preying on stingrays, but taking on a shark? Actually, this shark species lives on the seafloor and eats the same thing that sea otters do. They also have a very strong bite. Yes, the horned sharks aren't nearly as dangerous as great white sharks, but they do have powerful jaws and teeth to crush shells of shellfish. So it's by no means the easiest prey. Unfortunately, we'll never know whether the shark captured through the photographer's lens managed to retaliate by biting the sea otter. The people might have scared the sea otter off or the struggling prey put up too much resistance. In any case, the shark simply swam away. Nonetheless, what the sea otter did was undeniably impressive. And just when you're starting to think that otters are some unexpectedly violent creatures, you read this. In 2021, a pack of vicious river otters has been placed on Alaskan authorities' wanted list. Sure, the local otters look incredibly cute, but don't let their appearance fool you. These wild animals have attacked dogs, children, and even adults. Three otter attacks were reported in Anchorage in September, and officials asked residents to be alert around local lakes and rivers. One of the victims even had to be taken to the ER. Two more attacks followed later that month, both occurring on the same day. In the first case, an otter bit a woman who was rescuing her dog from a pack of otters. In the second one, recorded at the same lake, the otters attacked another dog. You see, they even put up a warning sign. This isn't the first time otters have attacked dogs in Anchorage. In two separate incidents in 2019, two dogs, a Labradoodle and a Husky mix, were attacked by otters and dragged underwater while swimming in the lakes. The owners had to jump in after their pets to fight off the otters. Both dogs survived, but received bites and cuts that required several stitches. Although no one knows how many otters are really behind these incidents, it seems to be the same group of particularly aggressive animals. It's like a river or a lake gang. Given that dogs were present in nearly all of the attacks, they're most likely the ones the otters are reacting to. The expert noted that otters don't typically exhibit such a strong reaction towards dogs or people. It's possible that a previous incident with a dog taught the otters to be aggressive. Although it may seem like the otters are going too far, there's likely a reason in their past that we're unaware of. But with all that said, we're all pretty lucky that modern otters are not that big, even the giant ones, because the remains of an ancient otter found in Ethiopia show that the long extinct creature was the size of a modern lion. An otter the size of a lion, and it weighed 440 pounds. Thank goodness it went extinct two and a half million years ago. The teeth found by researchers alone are an inch long. Here you can clearly see how big otters used to be compared to their descendants. Because of its enormous size, this species is said to have fed on both aquatic and terrestrial prey. Also, the ancient otter likely died when the humid climate became drier, 
Plus, the ancient hominids began to take over. All in all, things didn't work out in the otter's favor. And given all the things modern otters are capable of, I think it's for the best. See you later.